it is bones and in this one let's talk a little shop here now you as you can see i <laughs> i do have a lot going on here uh recent days i did get into a little bit of a craziness and i'm not sure i just had a lot of projects that i have been wanting to work on uh, little things on different figures but i did want to talk about some cool tricks that I have, some different ways of detailing your figures, and of course some mods, and even a little bit about a tool that I use that I've been using for a long time. <laughs> I really should have, you know, said something about it way before, but for newer people getting into customizing, or even if you might not know this tool, this might really help you out in uh removing barbells from the heads of the figures but as i said as you can see here i have tons of stuff going on <laughs> i don't even know where to really start i mean uh i i always wanted to change this dead man's head into a more bald looking head now i have this left over from the mattel multiverse i think it was in the alfred pack we have this weird head. I'm not sure what the character's name is that it is supposed to represent, but it is from the comics. But I just thought it would work well here, giving a sort of bald-headed version of Dead Man. Now, the original head he comes with is this, I think it's a reuse from another figure that McFarlane made. But it doesn't really capture what I think of when I think of Dead Man. I think of a more cleanly bald smooth head and i thought i had another lex luther extra head and i couldn't find it so i ended up using this one and i thought it worked pretty well now i still want to add a little bit of blue tinge to the highlights of this figure but i did whiten up the neck because it, it was like kind of gray painted the eyes to give it that spooky feel and now i have a whole new dead man figure now do not fear we have an extra dead man that I'll be opening up. That way I still have one in its original standard version, which I usually like to do with figures that I customize. But that's not a big thing to worry about. Now, as you can see, I have so many Aquaman going on here. I had bought a ton of the Rebirth Endless Winter Aquaman to do different things on. Uh, you can see right here I did a aquaman holding a golden gun now, i've had this for a while and this just kind of shows you my little quirky humor and at the same time i like the style the way it looks something you don't <laughs> you wouldn't really see as aquaman holding you know a golden gun but i have different versions of aquaman going on here that i've been working on especially with that new digital figure that i had some extra heads to work with but little details changed in each one. I even straightened the eyes on one of them. That way he doesn't have that side eye. So I have a couple of side eye versions and I also have a straight looking version. So that's something I always wanted to get done with. Now, something you might not hear me talk a lot about and that's the spawn line. Now, I do collect this line, but I do collect it a little bit less fanatically than I do the DC multiverse. But for a long time, I had one. <laughs> I've actually been holding on to this figure for a long time. I bought him for like 10 bucks, you know, loose. And this is the Haunt figure. Now, the thing about this is that I have already two of these. I have a standard one. I have one that I removed all of the sort of ectoplasm and tentacles. So he looks more like a clean suit without any extras. And then I matte painted him to, you know, take off some of the gloss. But what I really always wanted to do was do a bloodied up version of Haunt. Now, another thing I figured out was that the tentacles, for some reason, they look really like close to the body. Like they don't have any extension on them, which is what I always, you know, imagine in my mind when I think about, you know, the haunting energy that comes off of haunt <laughs> creepy tentacles so what i ended up doing was pulling these tentacles 
and heating them up and they stretch out longer and farther and, and thinner and it just gives it a better look and if you look up some images of haunt there's a lot where he's you know covered in in blood of you know with the crimson mask and i repainted the head a little bit to make to give it more of like a skull look where the original version has like that haunt design but i have seen images where it looks more like a skull so i wanted to capture that as well a great figure and i really love having a bloody up version i also painted the shoulder discs black underneath so that the you know colors could match whenever you articulate him and i also did all of the waist mods that i could think of for his articulation just to give him that little bit more of range of motion but that's a figure that i <laughs> have you know had on the back burner for a long time and i really do love the you know haunt look the way he looks don't know too much really about the actual comic story or anything like that, but really a figure that I think is underrated from Farland. A um, couple of their little things is Captain Carrot. Now I love the original release. He has a ton of shading around his nose and mouth and the ears. But for some reason, the platinum version they kind of omitted all of this extra painting. So I wanted to add a little bit of that because in, in actuality, the eyes look kind of derpy and made them look pretty strange. So I went in and at, made it look a little bit more like the standard version, added a little bit of shading to the mouth, to the teeth, to the nose, added the whited out eyes, and then the black trim around the eyes, which really gives them just a more denser look and he doesn't look so plain and he definitely came out great really enjoying him now gives him a little bit more attitude and now i have a, a cool version of both versions of captain carrot oh what else am i working on here now one we'll get into and that is the wonder woman now i've heard a lot of people say how she's really tall now, I never heard of really a short Amazon. I know in the comics she can differ from size to size. But when you want to line her up with the rest of your Justice League or whatever team she's on, you kind of do want to have the option of a taller one and a shorter one. Now, I had this idea for a while. I just hadn't, you know, implemented it. But this is just your standard version of Wonder Woman. If you put her next to, let's say, your standard... Hush Superman and Nightfall Batman, she is slightly taller than both of those figures. And if it's your preference, you want to have her a little shorter. I did tackle this problem. Now, it is kind of difficult. It did take me a little while, but it can be done. And what I ended up doing was this is my platinum, you know, classic version. Now, since I knew I was going to want to put her next to a couple of the shorter versions of characters, the classic versions, I wanted to shorten her down definitely and what I ended up attacking was boots and the legs because I could see that the tip of the boot was really low on her shin so there was room to raise up the boot cut off some of the excess uh, length of the legs and that would make her size a little bit more comparable to more of the shorter figures now I did achieve this by first heating up and removing the boots you can see I got some images here not a big tutorial guy but I did want to at least document this a little bit so got the two boots off you can see how they connect in to like a socket cut them down first I did one you do want to mark it and measure it you don't want to cut out too much this is a delicate process and in fact I did learn a couple of things now I am going to do this process on another standard Wonder Woman that I have. So I'll have two, you know, standard Wonder Womans, one taller and one shorter version. But now that I learned by doing this platinum, I think my next one will come out just a little bit better. Now, this one's fine. You can't, you know, really tell a big difference or anything except for her height. So she is passable. 
But I am going to try this one more time. Now, once you measure about how much you want to cut off, you cut that off. And then you want to reattach the boots now. I didn't want to leave the inside hollow, so I did cut off that little plug that goes in and just glued it inside just so that her boots wouldn't be hollow because you're not going to get the exact same, you know, depth of plastic that goes in there. Fit it around, kind of had to cut a little bit more off, heat it up, centered it. It is a process, but I did replace the boots. Now for the chef's kiss, I did want to add the little white stripe to her ankle joint. That way it makes a smooth transition throughout the whole foot. And now that she is shorter, you can just use the regular ankle joints. You don't have to switch them out. And she has a better size compared to the shorter versions of the Trinity, Superman and Batman. Now my standard Wonder Woman, I actually can put her with Hush Batman and my custom Superman. And they are taller than her, so that's perfect. This classic Wonder Woman, now at a more reasonable height, now I can use her with different setups and not be worried about her extra height. Pretty cool. I actually had this in mind for a while. I just never got around to doing it, but she looks really good. The little white stripe of the ankle ball joints really brings it in. And I was also able to extend her neck peg up instead of keeping it short the way her head is kind of scrunched down. I ended up putting a longer peg, giving the way her head sits on her shoulders a better look. And she can articulate a little bit better with that extra distance. So finally happy to be done with that Wonder Woman. But really happy to have some experience. Now I can do the other standard version so I could have three different versions of Wonder Woman for my superhero team setups. Pretty awesome. Now, finally, the last thing I want to look at is my Batflake Batmans from Batman v Superman. I do have a standard version that I will always keep this way. A couple of things you could see. The head rides really high. The neck is really thin. The, the trunks are really wide in the front. I'm not sure what happened there. And he is definitely a shorter version. He's not too tall. So we wanted to address all of that. So I have an you know, extra <laughs> that I bought. Now, first thing I did was I changed out the neck, this like piece of the cowl that goes over and holds the cape in. I used one that has a lot more thickness to it. Bigger traps, I mean, look at those. You see his traps? Just gives him a more complete bat flick look. Now what this did is even though the head is really higher now, it doesn't look high because the thickness of the neck really masks that. Still looks like his jaw is wider because it's pushed down on this thicker neck. Switched out the cape with, I think the one that comes with the unmasked Michael Keaton, which is really wider and has more scallops cut out on it and just looks a lot better than the original release. So that worked out for itself. Now I will be doing a complete repaint on this one and I'm gonna go more with like a gunmetal gray since this has like a blue tinge to it, I'm going to get away from that and go more for a grayish tone. Now, another detail I changed is I did cut the front of the trunks to make them more streamlined. And they, for some reason, they just looked really wide. It also opens up when you want to articulate the legs. They don't have that restriction of that wide, you know, cut that they gave him. So this... Batflick Batman is turning out to be a really cool project. So he's starting to come together and he cuts a really cool silhouette of a Batflick Batman. Even added the, <laughs> the little dimple to the chin that for some reason is like not too prominent in the standard release. And now it does, you know, stick out a little bit more. I did do another version. So that's, <laughs> this is my third one. This is more of like a doomsday version, like when they're fighting against doomsday, he has his, you know, launcher there. And I did them all in a really dark black matte scheme. Now this is where I'll talk about 
the the height mods that I did on him because I did do them on this like panther neck version. I changed out the ankle ball joints. These are the ones from Endless Winter Batman, which give them, you know, that millimeter more of height. And they do match really well with the figure. I did the thigh lift, which is where you remove the peg from inside of the thigh. And then when you replace it, you don't push it all the way flush. You leave a little bit of gap. And it, what it really does is open up the thigh swivel because it's not so tight. Now it has a little bit more looseness. So you get more freedom of movement there. And it also lifts him up, you know, another little millimeter of height. And now this one, I did shorten the neck peg so that it would sit down on this sort of thinner cowl piece that he uses. But for all intents and purposes, really happy with this one as well. One of my favorite, you know, Batman figures for display. Now, finally, <laughs> we'll get to the tools that you use for, you know, removing the, the double barbell from the heads. Now, a lot of people always use like some sort of pliers, maybe like this. You heat up the head either in hot water or a blow dryer and the pegs can be removed. Now, the reason I don't like to use these sort of pliers is because they tend to do damage to the peg or even to the ball depending on where you pull it out of the, the head. Now, I've been using this tool since almost the very beginning, but I just, you know, never talk about it. And these are these sort of forceps, but they're like a hook shape. So they're basically uh, hook forceps, and they're shaped perfectly to the shape of the ball peg, the neck ball peg, the barbell. So you could heat it up with a little bit of heat, now, the reason I use these is because even if you have the head, it will not damage the head at all because since they have that hook shape, they actually hook around the ball and then, you know, pop off. And this is with minimal heat. What I've actually found with these is that you can even get a head and it could be pretty much dry without any heat and it will still pop out. With minimal force, you know, you do got to pull a little bit tighter because it's not warmed up. But what it doesn't do is damage the head or damage the barbell. So these are really useful. Now, you can get these at, on Amazon, I guess, or eBay or at your local medical supply warehouse. But they are really a lifesaver when you want to remove a head ball peg, saving you from any damage and making it definitely a lot easier. Now, we could also go into like extending the barbells, making them shorter or making them longer, depending on what you need, but that's a topic for another video. So anyways, guys, that was some cool little custom work I've been working on. I wanted to get all this done for one main reason, and that was because I wanna clear the desk off, and I'm gonna review the Asriel Night's End Batman, the first appearance Batman, maybe even the repainted Nightfall Batman with the black version. But I do want to get into reviewing those figures. So I wanted to get this little video out of the way that you guys keep hunting out there, keep collecting, keep customizing, and I will see you on the next one. Call me Crazy Joe, but now they can call me Batman.